on babe my seat yes every time I want to sit in this seat I have to move this one because she's always got it no this is not the appropriate time for you to snuggle it really isn't say hello and then say goodbye yeah there you go down you go right so um I said I have I hope that this is going to work because this time because last time I did it I put a book up here to focus on here she's back again I put a book up here to focus on smo um, and unfortunately the video then focused closer and the top of my head was chopped off which might happen again but hey um, okay so what I wanted to talk to you about is making your own molds from um things from the seaside for example and this is the thing i was talking about in the in the little message i put on patreon i hope you can see that um this is a slightly larger cockle shell i've got smooth hairs on me now um a slightly larger cockle shell embedded into a piece of polymer clay in fact if you can see it there is actually a tiny bit of this shell showing underneath so what you do is you bury a larger shell into a piece of polymer clay until you just have the quantity of the shell that you want to make your mold somewhere I've got a mold that shows that but of course it's disappeared now smoosh it tails on everything so the actual mold that I make from this mold master is this and then I make the presser part uh, uh, there's a locator there and the presser part goes on top so this is like a cup shape that I can push the polymer clay the mold making material into smooth I think I'm chopping my own head off by leaning forward as well um, Yes, that, so that uh, mould is made in that one and then the, then the push mould that goes on top um, is made from that first mould. So it's just um, talcum powder in the first mould and then that second one. And this is the one that I sell. So it's exactly the same. I'm telling you exactly how I make my mould masters. So that's how I make them. Um, so next time you go to the seaside, you'll see all sorts of bits and pieces this one's um actually a clam shell which is i mean a, a scallop shell i get these two mixed up oh there's another one a scallop shell which i could have used this one but the problem with this is that the lines in this shell aren't as uh deep as the lines in the in the cockle shell and so and so even though the cockle shell is much much more curvy it's better <coughs> it's better to use to get the lines and you can uh, eliminate some of that curve by how far you put it into the polymer clay <clears throat> excuse this cough it's something i've had for 18 months and i can't get rid of it it comes from the chemo as soon as i started on chemo it started and it's never gone away um, so it does stop me from doing live work very often and it's a damn nuisance at, at, in classes so this um, I've just found this one last time I went to the seaside and it's this is a, a slightly bigger gap between the between the lines so I'll try using this one next time I make a mold because it's uh, it's a very nice shell the only thing that this doesn't have that the cockle shell has is the the flares and in fact in my mold that i sell i haven't added on the flares and i may do so in the future i may do a, a, a edition two i have in fact cut a flare out of my own one with um with a blade but it's not that successful really it's a bit of a nuisance sometimes it breaks off so, oh, the other thing I found at the seaside last time I went was a very small uh, oyster shell, which 
I use just to just to look at just to see what oyster shells look like it's too big for 12 scale of course that one's probably about a maybe a sixth scale or a quarter uh, not a, I mustn't say quarter scale because that means something else in America um, it's uh, probably just a bit bigger than a, a Barbie scale that one um, the other thing I've picked up from just from the shops when I bought um, a scallop in in its shell cookie sunshack they're called um, I kept this because this is what I'm aiming for this is quite a small one so remember you don't have to do 12 scale of that because you can get them much bigger sort of that size so you're not aiming for for really that small but the reason I've kept this is to keep is to look at the staining marks on here so that I can copy the coloring because with the best will in the world we never remember the colouring exactly this one hasn't got much in the way of colouring around these where these um, annual growth rings happen um, but some of them do so it's worth remembering that and some have marks inside as well on where the annual growth rings are I don't know maybe they've got some pollution or something it's, uh, it's worth thinking about anyway um, so I collect all sorts of um, sea life, etc., for making moulds as well as just for um, looking at the colour and the shape, etc., for future reference. So um, I'll try this again in the next couple of days, and but do let me know whether you like to to have live, sort of semi live, because I can't do live yet. I'm sure I will be able to, but um, I don't think it's that important. Um, but tell me if you like these little quickie videos that aren't perfect. They're not edited or anything. They're just me in front of my, my iPhone, really. And thanks for being my patron. I appreciate it very much. And let me know what you want to know about.